What is up guys, welcome back. I'm back here at Mercedes-Benz of Bonita Springs where I found this in the used car inventory. Now this is a 2022 Audi SQ7. And I gotta tell you one thing, if you get this vehicle, you're definitely gonna get your kids to school on time. And today I'm gonna take you on the tour of this vehicle. We're gonna check it out from the exterior, interior, jump inside of it, play with some cool technology features on it and then at the end of this video my favorite part i'm going to take you on the test drive with it but before we do all that i have a quick favor to ask help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscriber by the end of this year by clicking that little red subscribe button at the right hand corner of this video before we get back to this vehicle So the SQ7 is a performance version of a very popular midsize SUV by Audi, which is the Q7. And it differs very little from the front. The biggest, of course, difference is underneath the hood, which we're going to take a look in a bit. But let's take a look at the styling of this vehicle. I like this nice long hood, very subtle body lines on it, but it kind of creates this bulge in the middle. They also have this huge grille right here. You can see this bottom portion is closed off, but the top portion allows for the maximum air to get inside and help with the cooling and the performance of this engine you do have the sq7 badge right here and that's where a lot of the sensing technology hides right underneath those two trims over here and then you of course have the audi badge or audi logo right in here open is also on the sides you can see those huge air vents again helps with the performance of this vehicle everything is performance based i gotta tell you it's not overly over the top it's very similar to its sibling which is the non-performance the q7 but this one is all blacked out it looks a little bit sportier right what also i like i like the lights check this out you can see this blanks those are the daytime running lights slash turn signals the sequential turn signals look really really nice from what i remember audi used to have the one piece I don't know when they switched to those several different pieces for that. Maybe that's the new feature for 2022 and the fully LED lights as well. That's all in here. You also have the light washing system, the headlight washers, which are right underneath here. But I'm super excited to pop this hood open. Let's see what powers up this beast. This is what makes it an SQ8, a 4-liter V8 twin turbocharged 500 horsepower, 568 pound-feet of torque. 8-speed Tiptronic transmission delivers the power to four wheels, takes this vehicle 0 to 60 in just about 4.3 seconds. That's an official result, but unofficially it has been tested at quicker than that. Check out the side of it. It does have this one hood strut, but it is strong enough to keep the hood nice and tall. It does have some sound insulation underneath here. Let's take a look at the side view of this vehicle. Now, to be honest with you, I wish it looked a little sportier on the side. Now, without looking at the details, it looks just like the regular Q7. Now, it's not until you start looking at this setup right here. So let's take a look. 21-inch wheels, nice black satin five split spoke design right here. They're dressed up in the Pirelli Scorpion Zero Performance tires, 285, 40. 21 this is the size of the tire but what's behind it that's what matters with all that power that you have with the engine you need the stopping power so you have this 15.8 inch rotor with this huge brake calipers right inside of it to help with the stopping of this vehicle overall the design like i said it's fairly plain right now it does have all the features uh, safety features like it does have the turn signal indicator it does have the camera right underneath here okay it does have the blind spot assist that's actually on the side of the mirror on the inside of the mirror and then if you look at the design of it it's all blacked out so i kind of wish it was a different color exterior kind of to show you the different trim pieces but this is black on black 
course, the smart entry system, it locks, it unlocks the vehicle without having to push any buttons on the smart key. It does have quattro kind of embossed on this trim, which is very, very hard to see from where the camera sits. And now let's take a look at the back of it. Let's see what else we have. Definitely the front and back is what adds to the sportiness and the character of this SQ7. So you can see this is much more aggressive than on the regular one. I like how even this top spoiler kind of has this indent in the middle for the better air aerodynamics in here. You do have the third brake light right here, the window wiper. These are all LED, fully LED lights. Sequential turn signals. See, when I lock it or unlock it, I hope you can see it. You can see those sequential turn signals. Audi logo, of course, the reflector lights, backup lights, huge exhaust, two on both sides, so double exhaust on each side. This makes this vehicle look and sound great. Now, this one doesn't have the towing package, but if it did, it can tow up to 77 hundred pounds on it so not too shabby for a vehicle that's a performance vehicle like this now press twice to open the gate and I'll let's see what we have inside all right so we do have a power lift gate you know with two buttons right here one to close it one to close it and lock it and then right behind here we do have the third row seats up now these are foldable we'll check that out in a second behind the floorboard right here you do have the fix a flat so there's no spare tire in here and then everything else is blocked so it looks like on the standard ones you could have maybe a, a spare wheel but not on this one now as far as the rest of this the trunk space in here or gate space or cargo space however you want to call it you do have the height adjustment if it's too high for you to load your groceries simply lower this vehicle now you also have the ability to fold down both of the back seats now if i let them go do they go hey you have to hold them i guess to uh, keep them all right but this is for the third row seats only, nothing for the second row seats. So you actually have to do it manually in here. And then the third row passenger will have their own cup holders. And that's about it. Do they have their own vents up on top? Nope, but they do have lights and speakers. So they can be really, really hot and enjoy the nice music in the light. There's plenty of room in the second row seat. I have plenty of new room. I have plenty of headroom, even with this panoramic sunroof. It feels premium, it feels very comfortable, so there's really no complaints in here. And I gotta tell you, this interior looks awesome. Let me show it to you. Starts with the door panel right here, so it is premium materials, right? You do have the carbon fiber polished aluminum. You do have the suede Alcantara type of inlay over here, armrest with an ashtray, come on. All right, so you do have the window controls and the Bang & Olufsen speakers in the back. If you look at the seating right inside of here, check this out. This is all premium, nice soft leather, quilted, contrast stitching, the whole nine yards, three seating positions in the middle row, right? You can have this as an armrest if there's no third passenger traveling. This one does have cup holders in here. Now, you also have the third row seat, but this is basically for kids. I'm not even going to try to attempt to get back in here, but they are here just in case you need to have this uh, family member that you don't like traveling with you right so let's move this up let's see what else we have as far as the middle console right here this is interesting because this screen right here actually lights up when you turn the vehicle on you have all of the uh, rear climate control settings that you can change in here underneath here you have connectivity so you do have two usb-c ports and a regular 12 volt power adapter you do have this hump in the middle because it is a quattro all-wheel drive system and you also have cargo nets in the backs of the seat kind of look like the cheapest thing out there and let's of course check out how this vehicle sounds when you close its doors boom nice and solid gotta tell you this is right up on top nine out of ten maybe ten out of ten same kind of setup for the door panel you do have this uh, carbon fiber with the polished aluminum that uh, continues throughout the vehicle and then you have two memory seat settings lock and unlock you have the mirror controls window controls lock controls that's where you open the gate bang and all of them in the front as well and then you do have the electric seats and again the seats in the front they're kind of a lot more sporty. Look at those bolsters, how much they're sticking out. I hope there's some controls in there so I can fit in there. And then there's an S right here to signify that this is a performance 
Audi right there. As far as the pedals right underneath here, you see the aluminum, and this is pretty thick rubber, so I'm pretty sure my foot won't slip off of it. And lots of carbon fiber. We're gonna check, check that it out, guys. This is the interior 2022 SQ7. I gotta tell you, it does have a lot of premium materials. The top of the dashboard, this is all leather wrapped with nice contrast stitching. Then you have this piano black, which, you know, love it or hate it, that is here, quattro. And then you have this carbon fiber spooly insert right here that trim continues basically all throughout the vehicle. As you can see, there's a bunch of screens, which we're going to get to. And you can see the rear view camera. Again, we're going to get to it. Now, as far as the steering wheel, it does have the smaller steering wheel. It is sporty. It does have an S right at the bottom, aluminum right here. And then you have some buttons on the side. You do have the pedal shifters right here. Again, in a sporty vehicle like this, and a performance one, especially that you're spending all this money on, I'd like to see those a little bit more or a lot more pronounced and maybe aluminum kind of in your face. Hey, we're here right so take a look at this now we do have a lot of different controls for the instrument cluster right here as well as on this side you do have your tracks media phone type of setup in here so still you know like this old stock for the cruise control right most of the vehicles have it already on the steering wheel Audi still does it on the side right you know, so the regular stocks right here for the turn signals, lights, and then the wipers on the other side. Okay, got to tell you one cool thing before we get to the instrument cluster. Check this out. Boom, right here. You see, it does it on the front and back doors as well. All right, so instrument cluster. This is the Audi Digital Cockpit Plus, right? So you can see tons of information in here. And this is probably the second nicest digital cockpit that I've seen. Well, the first one is the MBUX. I think I still like that better. And then you can see different views right here, okay? You can put this navigation, the whole screen, or you can put it right on the side. Then, of course, this is a performance SUV. So what's the most important thing? You have your tachometer, right? You have your RPMs, and then you have your speed, and then at the bottom of it, you see P, that's what gear we are in. It says, hey, 91 degrees outside. No, I'm not wearing my seat belt. And then you have some, you know, minimum and maximum boost on the right hand side. You can also see 5.7 miles per gallon, which is actually not true. This vehicle is not the greatest in gas mileage, but it's not the worst either. I mean, it does have 15 and 21 for 17 combined. So, yeah, yeah, kind of, you know, it is a performance SUV though. So, driving it, I'm sure it's going to justify spending that little bit extra, right? And it does have no gas right so we're gonna have to put a little bit in it to take it for a spin but moving on to the infotainment system we have it on the rear view camera so let's stay there for a second okay the quality of the camera is decent actually it's not bad at all it does have a 360 as you can see the top view of the vehicle all right so this is the front camera right here let's see if we can have the side cameras or this is the narrow view or wide view there you go, we have the top view, rear view camera, wide angle, narrow angle, however you want to call it. There's several different settings on that, that's pretty cool actually. All right, and then you have the 3D, can we move this vehicle around? There you go. Now move the vehicle around and see us in this parking structure right here. So this is a nice camera system, I really like it. Okay, I do have it in park, so I'm not worried about rolling over something. And then if you look at this, it is a familiar screen, right? That is Android Auto. It does have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is really, really nice. We get to the main Audi. Okay, screen, you can see the radio, media, phone, navigation, Android Auto, etc. So it's got several different options. And this is the touch screen and screen, right? But it also does give you that feedback when you touch it. So it's not like uh, just touching on the glass, but it kind of vibrates and gives you that feedback on the finger. I want to see what's in the vehicle settings. So you can see that Audi Drive Select, it is a performance vehicle. So let's see what driving modes we have. So we have an off-road, all-road, comfort, auto, and dynamic. And I got to tell you, off-road is going to raise this vehicle. Yes, it does have an air suspension, sport air suspension. So it raises and lowers the vehicle down. It does completely the opposite when you put it in the dynamic. When you do it in dynamic, I don't know if you could hear it, but the exhaust gets louder, the vehicle lowers down and kind of stiffens off everything in between. So let's go back 
and it says vehicle data okay so you have an inclinometer right here and then you have your roll you have your pitch you see okay we're 50 feet above sea level gosh man we're high up right the steering wheel is turned five degrees left right so the vehicle is lowered at the very uh, bottom of its range right here so let's go back in here efficiency assist air conditioning light and visibility we're talking about the air conditioning we're going to talk about something else parking aid okay so you have the front volume rear volume let's tell you the, this parking system the all those sensors right here are so sensitive I'm, I'm moving in this parking structure i could like almost play music with all those noises that it makes right setting and service steering wheel button assignment service interval integrated toll module this is pretty cool so this uh, will collect tolls right if you sign up this is a subscription required type of deal but if you have uh, collecting tolls it's going to collect it automatically without you having to pay the fines on it all right air suspension with trailer wheel change center locking internal monitoring so several different options that you have it is very customizable i probably would have to spend a little bit of time just learning this and then showing it to you guys if your settings as far as general settings display and brightness user system maintenance connected devices etc so display and brightness cockpit dimming audio virtual cockpit there you go i'm gonna put it in sport change now boom see this is what happens when you change it to sport nice bright visible comes on left hand side speed on there on the right hand side that looks quite different than from the regular performance ones okay we were in the s performance okay so this is what you can have and then the dynamic change it now and this is the dynamic one yeah i'm gonna stick with the s performance and that's my favorite one there you go all right so this is your screen then there's another screen at the bottom here and this is basically for your climate control and as you can see basically it's self-explanatory temperature up or down okay as far as the seats okay you can do the seat positioning right here so here's for your bolsters right and you can adjust them you can make them narrower and wider by using this buttons right here and then you can do the same thing this is for your top bolsters right here for your back and this is for your butt bolsters over here so make it wider make it narrower however you want it and then you can also extend this knee rest right here so once you set it you okay, probably set it and forget it because that's kind of not where i would want to mess with this all right so what else we have you can sync it you can unsync it as you can see there's three and fan settings on the driver's side five on the passenger side and then you have uh, a bunch of different shortcuts in here so you can turn off that uh, automatic uh, engine on hill descent assist what is this home address okay so this is free navigation uh, you can program the garage door opener one now no later okay so this is your home link basically built in and you can turn off the screen if you'd like to and um, all right so it does have heated seats but it doesn't come standard with the cooled seats look at this i can only heat it i have 90 degrees outside i don't think we need that all right so here's your drive select okay so we've already seen the different drive modes you can turn off the traction control automatically hazard lights front windshield defogger rear window defroster here's your volume button here's your safety system in the vehicle right there driver assistance maximum individual or basic and then if you press the other button right there this is basically turns on the camera right there engine start stop button pretty cool and sporty shifter right there you have the parking and then you can also shift the gears manually there you know we put it in gear and then do i put it oh yeah put it to the right and then I can shift it manual if I don't like the shifters on the steering wheel or the way that the automatic transmission works. Okay, so electronic parking brake, 12 volt power adapter, okay, cup holders, not made for this huge drinks that we have here in the US. And you do have the wireless phone charger, two USB C ports, and nothing else here. So very tiny little compartment right underneath here. But you do have the regular size glove box. Okay. 
and right up on top, you have LED lights, touch lights, so you don't have to press any of the buttons here. And then you have the panoramic sunroof control and, and open it up if you'd like to. There you go. That's quite a bit of light inside of here. And also quiets the noises from the outside. What a difference. All right, so this is the interior of it. It is pretty, pretty cool interior. Take it for a spin. So I'm, ab I'm about to take you for a test drive in this vehicle. And I gotta tell you, one thing I didn't mention is the key. They used to have those keys for Audi. They were really big and heavy. Now they got smarter, they got smaller. It does have the S on the back, Audi logo. All right, then there's lock, unlock, and two times for the gate. That's it, as far as the key. Now, for those of you that don't believe me, it's a 2022, right there, 2022 Audi SQ7. Now, this is the base model. There's actually two different models that are available for the SQ7. The one that we're sitting in right now, it's the Premium Plus. It starts at 88.5. But if you want to go for the more luxurious one with a little bit more features, you got to add five grand to get the Prestige. And the Prestige gets the interest section assist, head-up display, contour, ambient LED, interior, lighting package, multicolor, power soft closing door, and the leather package. And then you can option those out to the way you like it. So there's several different packages that are available to it. Now, this particular one, it wasn't very well equipped. I mean, they only had a few options, like the Mythos Black Metallic Color for $595, Audi Beam, S-Beam, which I believe those are the puddle lights, cargo cover, and Audi guard protection package, and had an MSRP of about 89,000 and some change. But I hear from everybody that's driven this vehicle that the drive of it is what makes it. I gotta tell you, it does have the all wheel steering, okay? It does sound really, really good. It feels good when you sit in it. I hope it's gonna be the same when I drive it. So I'll take it for a quick quick spin. I have to tell you, I have to maneuver around this parking lot and I mentioned before that parking sensors, all the sensors around are so sensitive. If you get close to it, it must have turned off because they were like singing, they were playing the music every time I got close to one of those posts in here. Oh, I can already see that this beast wants to go of course, we can't because we're still in the parking structure. So I'm going to check out the suspension on it. Uh, if you remember this lot, it does have a lot of speed bumps. So I'm going to be able to check that out. Now, the vehicle is lowered all the way and it's in the stiffest settings. So I don't expect it to be nice, lush, and very plushy on it. I can tell you, I didn't feel that bump too bad. Uh, yeah, no, I did. Okay. So, yeah, you get the uh, suspension. I actually select the, to the comfort mode right here. Now, let's see if it's going to be any difference as far as going over those speed bumps. Slightly, but there is a difference. So, and the vehicle got quieter right away. So, we turned off the performance exhaust. All right, so the vehicle is in the dynamic mode, and that's where it should be. And I'm about to take it on the road, uh, merge into this traffic, and see how it performs as far as acceleration, handling, braking, and turning. And then we're going to take it back to the dealership before we run out of gas, hopefully. Whoa. <laughs> that thing wants to go, wants to go. There's no ifs, ends, and buts. I got to tell you, it is a smooth acceleration. You get this thing up to 62 miles an hour without even knowing it's at 62 miles an hour. So hopefully I'm going to have the opportunity to actually go from a stop to 60 miles an hour to feel that exhilarating 4.3 seconds. And I think I just found the spot where I'm going to be able to do that. I can tell you that uh, all-wheel steering, you can definitely feel this vehicle turning on a dime. And that's basically what it's meant to be is for a larger SUV 
To minimize the turning range, I tell you, I want to stand right here, okay? And then, okay, I stopped all the way, and let's go. Of course, there's no 60, there's no launch one, it's at 71 miles per hour. This is incredible. Now, I drove the Volvo XC60 plug-in hybrid, which I was so impressed with the 4.5 seconds, zero to 60. This is quicker. It also feels completely different. I don't know. I'm kind of torn in between. You know, that one is a plug-in hybrid that gets a lot of this electric assist. This one is the raw V8 twin turbocharged power. It sounds good. Now, here, I'm 50 to 70 in the split second. This is truly a performance vehicle. Now, I like the the Range Rover, the SVR, that was pretty cool too. There's no question about it. That's fast. The Mercedes-Benz GLE 63 AMG, there's no question that's a fast one. I have not done the X5M competition. Um, I've done the X3M and that was incredibly fast too. So I know how those vehicles feel. And when you get that 500 horsepower out of a V8 engine, I gotta tell you, that's sweet. So uh, here's the to sum it all up. Now the exterior, I probably would like to have it a little bit more aggressive. I know you have the grill that's a little bit different than the back of it, but still make it a little bit more sporty if you can, Audi. Now as far as the handling, really there's no complaints, none whatsoever. I took it on the drive before I did the review, and while I'm talking to you, I gotta tell you, I'm thoroughly impressed with this vehicle as far as the performance. As far as the tech and gadgets, this uh, infotainment system, while pretty cool, I mean, it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. And I'm not saying I dislike it, but it's not always very intuitive, okay? The design of it is great. Not big on the piano black, but guess what? I would have to hate all of the vehicles because all of them have it right now. I do love the carbon fiber on the interior. Now, the Prestige Plus package is going to have some other features on it. I hope it does have cooled seats. Come on, we're in Florida. I don't need heated seats. But if I'm spending 100 grand on the vehicle close to it, I better have ventilated seats. So, and that's this one is missing it, so it doesn't have it. Other than that, that's pretty cool, guys. Again, thanks, huge thanks to Mercedes-Benz Bonita Springs for allowing me some time with this vehicle. I'm really thankful. This is the first Audi on my channel, hopefully not the last one. I don't have any Audi dealers that I work with, so if you are an Audi dealer and you're watching it, you work for one, or you have a pretty cool Audi, I'd love to take it for a spin and do a quick review of it. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next video. Oh, by the way, don't forget to click that subscribe. Turn on that bell notification. Now, I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.